Oilon Wise Drive is a microprocessor based burner control and safety system. The advantages of the system are efficient combustion, low flue gas emission, and increased safety. Oilon Wise Drive system is suitable for both continuous and intermittent operation. The benefits the system offers you are precise ratio setting and the possibility to restore alarm diagnostics. Setting the basic parameters and backing up data can be done on the control panel and with a computer. The system has versatile field bus connection possibilities and the operator is able to monitor diagnostics and settings remotely. The components are specially designed for the system. This ensures continuous operation and safety. The system supervises the components related to safety functions with frequent self-testing. The Wise Drive Burner Control System serves for the best possible burning result and usability. Site personnel monitor system operations on a computer screen. The control panel is the user interface for the system. The control unit operates the burner. The server motors operate and control airflow, fuel flow and combustion head positions. The oxygen sensor observes the residual oxygen levels. The frequency converter adjusts the fan motor rotation speed. The CAN bus cable transmits information between system units and the control panel. Standard Wise Drive delivery includes a control unit, a control panel, server motors for fuel regulation, a server motor for the air dampers, and a CAN bus cable. The Wise Drive system is available for all modulating Oilon industrial burners with a wide range of options. Before you start commissioning or servicing the burner, check that you have all the necessary tools and documents. You will need the burner manual, either a paper copy or a soft copy on a laptop. Make sure you know the system password in case you need to log into the system. You will also need the frequency converter manual for setting parameters and a laptop for storing and restoring system data. In the burner manual you can find detailed instructions for installing and mounting the burner. Make absolutely sure that the fuel piping and installation are laid according to the regulations of local authorities and that the burner is connected according to the electrical diagrams delivered with the burner. Pay special attention to the requirements for electrical equipment and their connections. Ensure that plant grounding is done correctly before commissioning the burner. Before the first startup, always check the fuel lines, electrical equipment and hoses along with their connections. Naturally, there should be fuel available and sufficient amount of water in the heating system. Make sure that piping is installed correctly and its joints are tight and have no leaks. You should check that the piping valves are opened and then test the gas piping carefully for leaks. Using the pressure gauge, make sure that the fuel pressure is adequate. For oil use, the oil booster's oil pump must be vented and the oil filter installed. Check that electrical connection points, inputs and outputs, as well as the motor rotation direction, are correct. Burner control system monitors the input and output and the bus interface. Improper connections cause burner lockout. Now you can switch the power on. The blinking light indicates that the CAN bus connection is working. The control panel is what you use for monitoring the burner and adjusting settings. The control panel has a battery backup memory where burner control parameters are stored and recalled when necessary. In the control panel, the menus are divided into two user levels. The first user level can be entered without a password. The second user level is password protected and intended for commissioning and maintenance personnel use. Use the panel's four buttons to scroll and change set values. You can scroll the menus by pressing the select arrow buttons. To select a desired sub-menu, 
press the Enter button. Return to a higher menu level by pressing the Escape button. To change the set values, select the Parameters and Display menu. Then select the parameter you want to change. Set the new parameter value using the Select Arrow buttons. To save a selected new value, press the Enter button. The oxygen module and oxygen sensor increase combustion efficiency. They measure the residual oxygen content of flue gases. Activate the oxygen sensor during the first startup to start heating. After the activation process, the oxygen sensor requires the temperature to reach 700 degrees Celsius. The oxygen module creates the required temperature itself. Note that this can take a while. Oxygen module settings are on the menu level Parameters and Display. Select O2 module. Before the first startup, you will also need to set the frequency converter parameters for the fan motor control. After activating the oxygen module, standardize the frequency converter. You can do this in submenu VSD module. The frequency converter parameters must be set for the fan motor control. Refer to the manufacturer's manual. The settings you need to change are the acceleration and deceleration time and maximum and minimum frequencies. You can find detailed instructions in the burner manual. The fan motor provides air pressure for efficient combustion. It can be fitted with a variable speed drive. The variable speed drive adjusts the air pressure according to the burner's capacity by controlling the fan speed. Ratio curve is created by adding single curve points for different capacities. The process begins with starting the burner. The curve points define the ratio curve. Each curve point defines the actuator position for the current capacity. After startup, the burner drives to pre-purge position. Remove the program stop, after which the burner will continue to ignition point and on to minimum capacity. Now you can set the curve points. Enter the submenu for the curve parameters. Press Enter to set the first curve point and press Enter again to select Change to modify the point data. When the system asks about the actuator position, choose Followed. This means the actuators will follow the changes made to the point data in real time. The display shows current servo motor positions in degrees, frequency converter control and capacity in percentages. The first point is the ignition point. After this, you can start adjusting the point data. Set the load value in percentage points to match the actual minimum load point. The oxygen level is shown on the display. When adjusting the point data, observe that oxygen is at a suitable level. After changing the values, wait until the changes take effect. That is, when the oxygen level does not change anymore. When all values are set and you want to save the point data, press Escape. Then choose Store by pressing Enter. Note that you can modify any point data at any time. Continue with the next points by adjusting the load manually and then lowering the other values to match the actual values. You can create a maximum of 15 curve points. Normally, it's enough to set 7 to 10 curve points depending on the fuel. The ratio curve should be as smooth as possible. When all curve points have been created, save the whole parameter setup by pressing Enter after exiting the menu. Remember to fill in the measurement report for burner.
Oxygen control is essential in reaching the optimal air-fuel ratio, maximizing the combustion efficiency and minimizing emissions. Oxygen ratio control can be set after setting the capacity ratio curve. Oxygen ratio control is set separately for both fuels, and they are independent from one another. Start setting the oxygen ratio curve by setting the oxygen minimum value control. Oxygen minimum values can be entered directly to curve points. The first line shows the curve point number. Enter the residual oxygen level in percentage points. Exit by pressing escape and confirm values by pressing enter. After setting all minimum values, you can set the oxygen curve. The display shows the current residual oxygen level. Wait until the level stabilizes. The burner control uses this level for calculating the oxygen trim control settings. Confirm the selection by pressing enter. The final step is setting the standard value. Set the value and wait for the desired oxygen level to be reached. You can save the value when the set point is at least one percentage point below the ratio point. Confirm by pressing enter. At curve point two and at the highest curve point, the burner control measures the time delays for the oxygen monitor by driving burner back to the ratio curve. Continue with the following points the same way. After setting the curve, activate the oxygen trim control operating mode. When the burner adjustments have been made, it's time to set the boiler operating temperature or pressure. After that, you need to set the on and off operating limits. Enter the menu and set the percentage values that the boiler can differ from the set temperature or pressure value. The preset value in the burner control is internal load controller. If any other load controller mode or an external set point is used, refer to the manual. Finally, you need to set the burner operation to automatic. Now that you have carefully commissioned the burner, Oil on Wise Drive will operate your burner efficiently.